From time to time, I see articles and videos covering the amount of savings and the net worth people should have, usually based on age. And I really struggle with this topic because much of this really relies on broad approximations or rules of thumb. I found that in an attempt to provide broad coverage that covers everyone, they ended up not really covering anyone. I think by now, we all know that one size does not fit all. While we're going to do a deep dive into this idea of how much gold and silver you should have at different points in your life, it's imperative that you watch this video with the right mindset. In particular, there's one major caveat or warning I need to give. I've warned of this in several other videos, but it's comparing is a dangerous behavior to fall into. As Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. There's absolutely nothing more dangerous to your happiness your, and ultimately your investing success than the act of measuring yourself, your wealth, your success, or your, even your life relative to someone else. This is because we never really know someone else's story, their journey, or how they got to where they are. For example, what if I told you that I lost a 100 yard dash race to my uncle Rick Rule? Well, that would sound pretty bad. At the same time, I would imagine you would feel very differently if I told you that my uncle Rick had an 80 yard head start. Let's continue with this running a race concept because I think it's really important. I remember the first time I watched a relay race and my little kid brain couldn't understand why the teams on the outside got a quote unquote head start in front of the other teams. I didn't understand that the outside lanes had to be staggered to make up for those running on the inside lanes that don't have to cover the same amount of distance. Unfortunately, life doesn't make those kinds of adjustments that balance out advantages some runners benefit from during their quote unquote race of life. What I had to learn and life had to teach me in some very real hard ways was that in my personal life and even as an investor, all I can really do is control how I run my own race. I had to learn to resist the temptation to treat this as a race against other people and realize that it was a race against myself. It's not about coming in first place. It's about can I run and improve my performance as measured against me. This shift has allowed me to stay in my lane and run my best race because the person who looks like they have a head start may have to cover a larger distance based on where they are on the track and vice versa. With that as a backdrop, I want to cover some of the benchmarks financial firms have submitted as ideal levels of net worth, income, and savings at different ages and what that means for us as holders of gold and silver and other precious metals. Remember, these are numbers and at best, they are just a financial flag post or checkpoint in your journey. And they don't tell you anything in regards to how you have run your race or where you will finish your race. They don't also speak to the specifics of your particular situation. So I hope you take this information in for what it's worth, a snapshot of data points that apply to the median person. What you see in this first table are the ranges of ages and the median net worth and median salary. As a reminder, Median and mean appear to be the same, but they are actually calculated differently. The median is the middle value. So if you have seven numbers, the fourth number would be the median. And the mean or the average would come from adding up the seven numbers and then dividing them by, this, by that number seven to kind of give you an average value. These two columns here are numbers are the median numbers for individuals in the US. Next, I'm gonna add two more rows here and I'm going to add uh, the amount saved and the savings amount. Essentially, as a general marker, it's believed that at any particular age, you should have a certain multiplier of your salary as your retirement savings. Now, the multiplier I'm sharing here comes from T. Rowe Price, if that matters. But what's interesting, and hopefully you've noticed, is that the median net worth and what is suggested using the multiplier are very different numbers. And that's a whole different conversation. So just put that to the side for the moment. With that clarified, now let's look at how much gold and silver you really need by age. And this is where y'all are gonna have some opinions that are just all over the board. So first, before you yell at me and start arguing with me, let me just share the research. Researchers have worked backwards and conducted a number of statistical analysis. They have shown that you only really need 10 to 20% allocation to gold and silver in order to maximize returns on your portfolio as a whole. Even silver guru David Morgan only recommends around 20% of your wealth be held in gold and silver. But there's kind of three phases. There's the very conservative, I just need enough. If something really goes awry, that'd be like 10%. I'm pretty sure things are gonna go awry, that's like 15%. And I'm certain something bad's gonna happen, that's 20%. But no more than that. That aside, what I've also added to this table now is the dollar amount of gold and silver you should have based on a 20%, 15%, and 10% allocation. And that was based on the retirement savings amount. Frankly, those numbers are actually shocking and make my brain hurt. Using those numbers, 
The amount in gold and silver are staggeringly low. What I'm showing you now is the 20% allocation for gold and silver in terms of physical ounces using a 70-30 gold to silver split. And there's something about looking at this in terms of ounces that just really kind of makes it clear, really blows my mind. And it leads me to a number of key takeaways. One, if you're below these numbers, remind yourself that 95% of the world is below these numbers. And that's largely because of the systematic attack on gold and silver we've been under since Roosevelt in 1933. Most of the world doesn't even think about gold and silver unless they're talking about jewelry. Two, if you are on track with or well above these numbers, feel very good about your accomplishment and don't take your eye off the ball. Please don't make the simple conclusion that over allocation according to this table means that you're doing something wrong and you need to change what you're doing. As long as you have a plan, I want you to keep working your plan. That's the most important thing here. And then the third point, realize that these numbers only matter if you're the median person living in the median part of the country, making the median amount of money, living, looking to live a median kind of life. For any bar benchmark to be useful, it has to be realistic. It has to really be based off of you and your specific situation. Setting your target too low could lead to a false sense of confidence. Setting your target too high could discourage you from taking action. This isn't about making you feel superior or inadequate. I decided to do this as a way to prompt you to action to develop a plan and to develop some goals for your stacking and your finances in general. What I've shared are the broadest guideposts to inform your actions. Even if you simply keep doing what you're doing, provided it's all associated with a bigger plan, that's great. But determine the percentages and the benchmark for the type of life you want to have going forward and run your race focus on staying in your lane. There is no need to compare yourself to anyone else. You're comparing yourself to how well you perform. How well did you save money last month? How well have you stacked over the last couple of years? How well have you done the work that you need to do to pave the road for your future? Your goal is to do better than you did the last time. Please just focus on beating your personal best record. If you need a jump start, click on the link in the, in the description and schedule a free 30 minute coaching call with me. And let's see what we can put together to increase your performance. Call is completely free. I'm not upselling you to anything. It's just something I'm offering as a service to the community. In the comments section, when it comes to your stacking, do you think you need to increase, stay steady, or slow down your allocation towards gold and silver? And what are the goals that you have for the remainder of 2024? And if you don't have some goals, go ahead and set those goals. But either way, share them in the comments or simply put an A plus in the comments so that everyone knows that you always stack smarter and never stop learning.